paint. The final frontier. These are the very special voyages of the USS Sonic Sledgehammer. Her ongoing mission. To seek out new games and new miniatures. To test new methods and new lines of paint manufacturers. To boldly paint what everyone has already done before, but in a very slightly different way in order to make it easier. So, rather than launch into the spiel a second time, welcome aboard. Today I'm going to show you how I repaint my ships for Star Trek Attack Wing, which is a game of fleet combat from WizKids, and features pretty much all of the major factions and some of the not-so-major factions from the Star Trek universe. It's a pretty cool game. It's one of my favorite tabletop games. It's very simple to pick up and play. It can be a little bit difficult to find some of the single ships, but there has been a second edition released, which has a really nice starter set, as well as Star Trek Alliance, which is a campaign version, and uh, faction packs, which are pretty groovy. So whether you've got an old collection full of these ships that you just want to freshen up a little bit, or you're even looking at 3D printing some and you want some ideas for how to get smaller scale ships looking pretty alright on the tabletop, you can follow along now. All of the paints will be listed in the description below. So, let's get started. So, very quickly, what is Attack Wing? If ever you've played or seen X-Wing being played from Fantasy Flight Games, you've got a pretty good idea of what Attack Wing is about. It is a licensed version on the same game system, called the Flight Path system, with a few additions which make it feel a little bit more like Star Trek. Now, I I like Attack Wing more than I do X-Wing. I think it's a slightly more interesting game. But on the other hand, WizKids, in their infinite wisdom, Wiz, oh dear, when they licensed the system and they started development on Attack Wing, they didn't actually make miniatures for Attack Wing. These are ship miniatures, they are for um, hero clicks, is all they are. And they were sort of pressed into service. And with all the love in the world, I'm going to say that a lot today, I think, but they are not up to the same standard as the X-Wing ships, not by a long shot. So the standards and the pre-painted versions you'll get are actually much better than they used to be, which is not saying much, but at least you could put that on the table without being actively repulsed by the glowing blue that they used to be. Now the other problem with Attack Wing, let's just put this here. Of course, an Excelsior class. We know these, Starfleet Ship of the Line, crew of about what, 600 or so. They're quite big, you know. Not by modern standards of Starfleet vessels, but they're, they're large ships. And then there's Defiant. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't recall Captain Sisko being so tall, he needed a 30-foot ceiling on the bridge. So scale is a problem in Attack Wing. Now, luckily, we live in an age of 3D printing. And if there's one thing you can say about Star Trek fans, it's ordinarily that they're pretty early adopters of new technology. So there are plenty of STL files out there for free for Starfleet vessels and others. I've actually got a couple of Cardassian Keldons that I have printed too. But you can eyeball the size of those and make them fit a little better, if that's what you want to do. Some of the models that you'll find out there are also going to look better than the ones that uh, WizKids produces anyway. So if you do want to go down that route, well, Attack Wing, great game. If you want to replace the ships... I wholly understand why. Also worth mentioning is Star Trek Alliance, which uses much the same system as Attack Wing. It's basically a solo play version of the same. So if you're worried that if you pick these up, no one's going to play Star Trek with you, well, there's Alliance. And I've actually run through a couple of the missions in the campaign that comes in that, and it's a lot of fun. It works surprisingly well as a solo game experience. So go check that one out. It can be a little bit difficult to find. WizKids supply at the moment is up in the air, but go check it out. It is pretty cool. So I always find it easy to have a base and a stick set aside in order that I can prime and paint these things without having to worry about handling them. And you can probably see one or two areas where I should have gotten in with a file beforehand and smoothed this out. So it's not going to be a perfect job, but eh, I am painting a gaming piece here. Now, I started off by spraying this thing with a primer of Grey Seer from Citadel. Uh, it is already leagues better than that weird silver or blue that you're going to find on some of these. 
Now, some folks will insist that because the production miniatures had a blue tint to them, uh, that the ships should be blue. Now, I kind of figure that if the production team have made the ships blue, knowing that they're going to look grey on screen, the screen is what we ought to be trying to replicate here. Despite that, I am still going to use uh, Space Wolf's grey contrast over here, because a little, like a tiny fraction of blue in the modern Starfleet hulls looks kind of right to me. If you look at Defiant and Voyager, they're a little more blue. Um, the Enterprise, of course, she was quite grey. She was a production miniature. But I'm going to go with a, a refit sort of look. If you wanted to, you could just shade over this with a little bit of null oil, thin it out with some medium first. That'll give you a pretty good base to work from. But I'm going to use Space Wolf's Grey. Now rather than applying this neat, I have thinned it down half and half with the contrast medium. Because if I put it on neat, the whole ship's going to look quite dark. So I've got a nice big brush here, something with slightly soft bristles. And let's go applying this over the entire miniature. Now this is going to look real dark when it first goes on. But it will chill out as it thins and settles. And of course, we're not finished. So make sure that you are getting it into the panel lines. Really work it in. Don't worry too much about some of the tide marks. We're going to deal with that in time. Once you start applying contrast, don't stop. Now you'll see when that dries, it is not nearly as blue as it looks going on. It's still pretty blue, and we've got a few little tide marks on some of the panels, but to be quite honest, I quite like how that looks. Now as for the glove, I'm going to pull this off of the stick, because we're going to start dry brushing the miniature. And if we dry brush it on the stick, there's a pretty good chance we're either going to break the stick or this little mounting thing, which is pretty necessary. So I'm going to use a glove here to hold the ship for most of this, just so that I don't end up with stray paint on my fingers, smearing it around the ship. Now the paint we're going to use is Grace here again, but this time from the pot. Let's get a little bit of this onto a big soft makeup brush. This is going to prevent us from putting any of this into the recesses that we want to keep that slightly stained blue. Now you could probably be more generous with this than I'm about to be, but try and keep your brush moving in a circular motion, and let's start working that on. You'll see we start to pick up the edges of detail and brighten that ship up a little. Now over about 30 seconds, I've done a few passes, and you'll see that brightens things up quite a bit. We've got our nice grey hull, and let's flip her around, and there's the blue we started from. So that does make quite a difference. I'm going to go ahead now and do this to the whole hull, the, the complete hull, <laughs> the rest of the ship. Um, I am going to need to switch to a smaller brush to get into some of these areas, but just something with a nice soft bristles will do the job here. Now that is already looking worlds better than what comes out of the box. The order in which you do things from now on is really up to you. So I'm going to start with the nacelles, because that's what looks the coolest to me. I have here a little techless blue, and a brush which is going to keep a nice fine point it is going to be important. So still wearing my glove here, because I want to be able to hold the ship. I find painting small lines like this easier if I can just draw a straight line down like that. So with some techless blue, thin it down just a little bit, and let's fill in this area on the nacelles. Now that's a nice enough colour by itself, but if you want to take it a little further and be a fuss pot, and I am nothing if not a fuss pot, I have here a little Fenrisian grey, and we're going to paint a little sort of triangle shape in the centre there, and then just a little into the nacelle itself to look a bit like the engine glow. Now we could tidy those up, but remember we're going to be looking at this miniature from this direction most of the time, and that's going to look just fine. So now I have a little Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to need to creatively interpret the uh, ram scoops here on the front of the nacelles, because they aren't terribly well cast on these miniatures. Like Even if I spent the time to uh, fix them up, they don't look great. But that's fine, we can totally with that. We'll have a little play around. Don't forget too, the uh, impulse engines at the back here. And if you're feeling a little saucy, 
a little sorcery, if you will. Oh, goodness me. I need to be stopped. Anyhow, a little red stripe runs down the center of Enterprise's dorsal. Oh, there we go. Ooh. <laughs> if you mess that up, you can just go back to your grace here, straighten out the line and try again. Now, to be totally honest, I did tidy up some of that line with a little grace here. There's still a wee bit of a wobble in it, but I'm really not that bothered. I've got now some Avalanche Sunset, and there are a few little yellow or orangey sort of patches on the Enterprise. I'd suggest just paint them all the same color. Don't worry too much about the variation that you're going to see. So these little sections just behind the ram scoops on the nascelles, cells, let's put a little bit of this in here. There's also little minor details that you're going to have to paint on yourself. Just behind the shuttle bay, for example, there's a wee section here, and so on. Anywhere that you want these little patches of yellow, just go ahead and fill them in now. Now, speaking of details that aren't there on the ship, uh, eagle-eyed viewers will notice, what on earth are these squares at the back of the bridge here? These don't appear on any of the Enterprise variants I've seen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if the person who sculpted this for WizKids ever actually looked at the Enterprise. He said, being as gnarly an old geek as he would ever be. Uh, but there is also one thing missing from the saucer, and that is the phaser strip, which runs around the uh, dorsal hull here. Now, the color that these should be is really a very dark gray, almost black. Uh, but I've seen on Voyager, there is a very slight yellowish tint to them. And because we are exaggerating our details to be visible on the tabletop, that's what I'm going to go for. Now, since there is no raised strip, I am going to paint a little bit of Nasdrag yellow straight into this crease here to make that function as our phaser strip. With the bonus that if I make a mistake, whoop, out comes the thumb or the finger, I can get rid of that. Now, up close on our model here, that's going to look a bit funny, but put it down on table distance and that will work really well. If you don't like the yellow touch, then I'd suggest something like Basilicanum Grey or water down another dark grey. It will do fine. Now comes the fun part. And when I say fun, I mean the part that is going to test the limits of my sanity. We are going to paint the lit windows. And for this, I'm going to use Orthoon Grey. Reason being, if we use a pure white, we're going to look as though we've actually forgotten to paint some of these. So a little bit like Othoon Grey has a very tiny blue tint to it. Now some of these lights, or these windows rather, are not lit from the inside, and we will need to paint those a different color. <sighs> but yeah, get yourself a little bit of water in your paint, and start the laborious process of very gently dotting in the lights. Now some of these are in the position that they should be lifeboats. But then there aren't enough lifeboats on this whole bloody ship, so it's a case of making things up at this stage. So that takes a bit of doing, and in the name of your sanity, don't bother with the other side. No one is ever going to see it. Just, just do the top and marvel at your incredible fortitude. And when it comes to painting areas where the lights are off, I have here a little Skaven Blight Dinge. Uh, a dark grey will work well, but don't go... Don't go very dark, because at this scale, it will look really unusual to have such a dark color next to these. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done. <laughs> now I have a little screaming skull, and the galaxy class bridges, they are pretty beige. So I figure the light that we're going to see on the top of the hull is going to be pretty beige as well. So screaming skull, quite a nice one for that. I think I've figured out which parts of the saucer this sculpt is trying to tell me are the escape pods. So I have a little bit of flayed one flesh. Now an interesting thing happens, and I've discussed this in a couple of other videos, but there is a concept called scale fade, where the smaller the area you're painting, the darker a color is going to look when it's applied. So you'll see flayed one flesh is quite bright, but it's going to look relatively dark on our hull. Reason being is because the area that we're painting it to is so small, there is less light that we see reflected on that color. So we get a darker finish that reaches our eyes. It's bonkers, 
Uh, but it's absolutely true. It's part of the reason why we paint smaller miniatures with lighter colors. So there you go, a physics fact while we're painting Star Trek miniatures. That's, that's appropriate. Now it's a little difficult to see on something this size, but that will look pretty cool. Uh, do try it, because in person you'll probably see a better result than I can show you here. Now we've gone ahead and we've done all of the important stuff. I've yellowed in the deflected dish, because we're now going to come to it with a little bit of blue. Now if I flip this upside down, you'll see a slightly better view. I'm going to take some Calgar blue, and I... You know, I actually can't do it from this angle, so I am going to flip this around again. And from here, we're going to paint a vague shape of the deflector outline. We're going to blue it in a little. Uh, if this isn't perfect, I'm not too fussed. Again, we are painting something which is only going to be seen from one angle. So I'm doing this mostly so I know it's painted. That's a little bit impressionist. It looks like somebody's tried to open an Ikea in the front of the Enterprise there, but it will work. What I'm going to do now is to take this outside and hit it with a matte varnish spray. It's important that you do protect your work because these are going to see quite a bit of handling. But this section here on the front of the ship, if you want to, grab yourself a very fine tipped pen. And you can write the registry number on there. I do recommend use a soft pencil to sort of get a feel for how big your letters are going to have to be and get your positioning right before you commit to anything. I'm not going to paint a or even write a registry number on the front because these ships can represent any number of different vessels. So I don't want to lock it down. For a gaming piece, this will be fine. But let's varnish this sucker and get a look at the finished product. And there at last, our repainted Galaxy class is complete. Now, as mentioned earlier, there are probably a few things you could do to make this look a little nicer. In particular, fixing up some of the little errors on the sculpt, or just getting rid of some of those mold lines. I had not realized until well after I was started quite how much those were going to stand out. So, my bad, you can fix that up on yours when you paint those. As well, if you do decide that you want to go the route of 3D printing, then of course, Whichever miniature you choose, it's going to be up to you how you paint it, but this might help to give you an idea of where to get started. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below, my Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. Live long and prosper.